live and direct from the Biltmore Millennium. TSP and DJ King Assassin, we up in here. We up in here, man. I'm trying to find this Tupac uh, remix. <laughs> TSP TSP We are posted right now with TSP doing it live, folks. It's the boy DJ King Assassin. TSP, you've been doing a lot of things lately, man, making a lot of things happen. You know, you released uh, Tales from the Cell, man. You released that. What's next for you? Well, we're working on that Unity is Power movement right now, so you know we got that album dropping real soon, that Unity is Power movement album, man. Got a lot of good people on there. That's right. You know, with some substance, of course. That's Some right. Good West Coast music, you know. Definitely and, uh, good West Coast music. Yeah, we just out here putting it down, you know, bringing people together, you know. That's right. The fire lit. That's right. And we also have TSPU on the new DJ King Assassin single. And I want to talk about the new single that you're actually on, you know what I mean? Because that single is so incredible. It's called The State of Emergency. Um, tell us about that song. Tell us the concept because you were there. State of emergency, man, basically state of emergency is on some shit that's necessary. We need to bring substance back to this real hip-hop, West Coast hip-hop, East Coast hip-hop, whatever hip-hop you claim that you're doing, you know, you ain't gangsta, bitch, and you need to get your shit together. So uh, go back and rewrite your shit, you know, because... Uh, this state of emergency shit. You got all hitters on there. You got Baby Loke on there. You got DJ King Assassin on there. You got Hex on the Flex on there. You got K9 the Boss on there. You got me on there. E3. Man, Ice T. Got some originals. ED, I mean, you know, it's a lot of people on there. Cocaine. You know, the list goes on and on. You know. Emergency is that's that's right. Now, now tell the people out there, TSP, tell them like exactly how you feel about the the state of hip hop. You know what I mean? What do you feel about the state of hip hop as far as, you know, the emergency that it's in right now? You know, when you listen to today's music as far as, you know, the concepts, what people are coming with and also, uh, you know, the different groups from not just, you know, the West Coast. I'm talking about groups uh, across the whole United States, you know, because we see different you know, varieties of music when you hear the down south rap from Atlanta to Florida and also you see the difference in music in New York and also the new music that we have here in the West Coast. Tell me how you feel about some sides where you, how you how you see it right now. Well, I see it as far as the, the music in general. It's just took a turn for for the worse, you know, and we need some help, you know, it's that you know, people forgot that, you know, the children are learning from this shit. You know what I'm saying? I grew up right. listening to people who influence, you know, my livelihood in the streets. You know, that influence, you know, my upbringing. And that's what we got to get back to the essence of for people to remember that you influencing the youth. So what are you talking about? Is it true? Are they learning from it? You know, is there any substance behind it? You know, can I can I can I listen to it ten years from now and it still have that same substance and make a change, make a difference? That's what's missing. You know. Indeed, indeed, and I totally agree. With you. Um, one of the main reasons too is, you know, I agree with you totally on that because I believe it's really our fault why hip hop is in a state of emergency. I mean, we could turn around and say, uh, "Oh, it's the kids, it's the kids, it's the kids," but 
don't forget, it, it's our kids at the end of the day. It's our kids that are doing this, so that, that are making this music, and it's our fault for not cultivating them the right way as far as, you know, them growing up, you know, without our attention, without our attention towards, you know, what they're listening to and, and explaining them how it was for us and, and teaching them, you know, uh, what we had to do to make music, you know, as far as, you know, bringing in live instruments. We used to bring in a lot of live instruments. We uh, took time on making beats. We didn't have, you know, like the stuff like Fruity Loops out there and stuff like that, like these kids have. So that's why there's less creativeness uh, in the music nowadays. You know, it's just like the same beat. It's just a bitch, 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 you know what I mean? I don't wanna rap, no. I don't my god I can't rap no mama you know you all that uh all that shit like that man and you can't even tell what the fuck they're saying and they're repeating the same old shit you know it's all fault why these kids are rapping like that because you know we didn't we weren't there to groom them I mean we we groomed ourselves we felt we didn't need to groom them at the same time you know what I mean we just know that it's our fault is ladies and gentlemen it is our fault why hip hop is in its state of emergency right now you know what i mean it's like that but at the same time I, I don't see the west coast you know uh doing that you know as far as that type of style of rap you know we might have some here and there but i think the west coast has has really grown and matured since our days of uh nwa i think we actually uh you know stepped up our game a lot you know to to our creativity it's the others in others areas, and I'm not dissing any of these other areas right now. I'm not dissing, uh, you know, uh, Atlanta or Florida or uh, New York or nothing like that. I'm just saying, you know, everybody had true essence. Even even down south in New Orleans, they had, you know, they had the game on lock when they was, you know, with Master P and, and, you know, the Hot Boys and stuff like that. You know what I mean? When Cash Money was really doing it juvenile. Yeah. You know, we're talking about before Lil Wayne. And then later, later Lil Wayne got his thing going. And then, you know, they had the whole Young Money situation with the Drakes and Nicki Minaj's. But those are kind of like, I'm not saying Nicki's dying down, but I'm saying Drake and all that stuff. He's dying down. And he's not really how it, how it was, you know, last year or the year before that. Um, but you see the West Coast quickly on that uprise, you know what I mean? And, well, I can't, I can't really say that the West Coast ha hasn't been, you know, growing and nurturing their kids, right? Because we actually have been, to tell you the truth. It's the other cats in other areas that haven't been nurturing their kids right maybe they're they're uh off of too much lean or doing something something's going on you know what i mean um i definitely see changes in all them areas where they used to actually have it on lock but uh right now the west coast has it on lock whether you like it or not whether you say yes or no but the west coast does have it on lock and y'all know that shit y'all know that we have it on lock and we always had it on lock people didn't want to fuck with us because we was too gangster for shit at one point the labels quit fucking with us because we we had death row we had the ruthless records we had all the different record labels man that were you know uh laying it down the line and it got too real out here it got too fucking real for these labels motherfuckers coming up in there with guns and shit like that because at the same time we ain't stupid either we need the money and we need the right type of money for what we do you know what i mean and we got to get that money so uh at the end of the day now i think people in the west coast really know that business mind you know what i mean as far as if they're gonna get label deals and stuff like that you know they're, they're getting the money they deserve i know yg just uh closed a big deal and and big shout out to yg for doing that you know what i mean so the money is out here right now we are one of the richest states in america you know what i mean being that for the legalization of marijuana what do you think about that tsp being that uh weed is legal now i mean how does that make you feel and where do you think uh, that's going for California. Well, we being legal is took a huge step, but at the same time, I still been doing the same things that I'ma do if it was legal or not. I'ma right. smoke it if I need to sell it. I'ma sell it. I'ma get <laughs> that money. But at the same time, you know, it's it's a it's a beautiful thing. You know what I'm saying? It's just just you know we're evolving into you know something bigger something bigger and better you know so we being legalized it just means that you know now they could put a tax on it mm -hmm. you know now they could fuck it up for motherfuckers on the street but at the same time 
where there's a will, there's a way. The niggas gonna figure it out. Right. It's like when we was in the pen. We'll figure out a way to get that shit in. Exactly, <laughs> exactly. And yeah, you being locked up for that. Mm-hmm. Do you think it, it's gonna change the, the way now? Where does that put the, the legal system as far as if you're locked up and it's not, you know, and it's legal? Does that mean what, the, the pen, Yeah, how does that oh, work? Oh, all the people who, who went, to, went to jail for, uh, for criminal cases, for, for weed, possession, sale, shit like that, they getting out. They getting out? Yeah. Wow. Weed is legal. Motherfuckers getting out. I think that's... So if you got caught with some pounds and you were on probation and whatnot, is that going to get these cats out of jail or, or is it, you know, cats probably within the, the last Man. probably year? I wonder how they're going to actually... I wonder if they're going to honor that at all. What do you think? They're already cutting motherfuckers loose. Okay, so you know cats personal that, that are getting cut loose already from jail, uh, mm-hmm. county, and prison. Prison. Wow. Mm-hmm. Well, I guess that's a good thing, huh, for the cats that mm-hmm. got caught up with pounds. and. Come on home, homies. Come all on the home. homies coming home. All the homies are coming home. Yeah. And uh, GSP, you know, we've been doing a lot of shows. We had the, the Tupac tribute that was pretty cool. You know what I mean? That was a beautiful situation. Yeah. You know, to, to have your name with Tupac like that was, I know it meant a lot to you because I know Tupac is one of your favorites. Um, I know you grew up listening to Tupac, uh, mm-hmm. you know what I mean? And, and when Tupac died, were you locked up? Was that a situation? How did you feel when Tupac died and where were you? Man, when Tupac died, I was in Palm Hall in Chino State Prison. Mm-hmm. 1996, playing cards. You were playing cards? Mm-hmm. Wow. Me and my celly was playing cards, and the police walked up to us, and they told us that Tupac had died. That's crazy. And what was everybody's reaction at that point? Man, shit, everybody's reaction was like, shit, it's just, it's crazy. But yeah. like, me, I had listened to Tupac when I was in, in 92, 93, when he was first, first started doing this thing, you know what I'm saying? And this shit was barely, you know, surfacing, about to blow up, and I was listening to him, so. But yeah, when I was in, in, in Chino, Y and all that shit, I didn't even get to listen to music, you know what I'm saying? So, I, I didn't hear all eyes on me till like, probably like 97, 98, about 98, my first time hearing all eyes on me, so. Wow. Yeah. Now, what's your favorite Tupac song that you have out there? Mm, I got a lot of favorite Tupac songs. It's not really just one, you know. Right. It just depends on you know like the mood? the mood. Yeah, Pac sets a mood. You know, like that's you know that's where you know hip hop needs to go back to where motherfuckers are setting the mood. You let's know what say, I'm let's say if you was in party party mode right now, you wanted to do, uh, you know have a good time. You know, you know uh, what song would it be from Tupac? Hmm. Shit, he got a lot of them. Name one. The Hearts of Men. Doom, doom, doom. Yeah. Doom, mm, mm, oh, know? that's like a straight yeah. rhyme. So that's like men, get yeah. on your horse and travel. Yeah, it's and like, wild, yeah, wild get west it in. Side. Get it in. Doom, 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 get your doom. ride on. Get your groove on. Whatever you're doing, get it in. That's right. And, you uh, know? and, and you come from the, from the city of Oceanside, which is... Uh, also a hometown of mine as well. Yeah. And a hometown of this guy right over here. Look at him. Oceanside, El Camino High. Oceanside, El Camino High. Represent. And, and he knows about Junior Sehas. Rest in peace to Junior Sehas. Rest in peace, Mr. Seha. We miss you. Indeed, indeed. And there he is. See, we got San Diego all in the building tonight. Yeah. You know what I mean? Um, so I know different things have happened in your life. And, and one of the main things uh, uh, is the, the struggle as far as being locked up, uh, people don't know that, you know, you spent 12 years behind bars, 12 years in the prison cell, mm-hmm. and, and that's a story just in its own. Now, I remember, you know, for the people that don't know out there, of course, you know, there's a lot that don't know about you struggling and striving and the incredible uh, stories from that. Now, you had shared a story with me before. Oceanside? Yeah, Oceanside. Well, there he is right there. You had shared an incredible story before. Um, where you guys were making like 
how to record in there like you were like the MacGyver <laughs> in in prison. Tell oh, us yeah. about you being a MacGyver in prison because that's a story that, that is, uh, well, it touched me, you know what I mean? Because right. I was always that type of person, but outside of jail, you know what I mean? And, and I could imagine if I would have been locked up, you know, a certain time like that, I probably would have been doing the same thing like how you are because you were always musically inclined and not only that music savvy with with that the actual recording equipment tell us about that well when i was in in the pen i was in Folsom. you know it was around uh 1997 i found out about a class on br arts and corrections right you know and they and they did uh they had uh keyboards in there they had trumpets you know saxophones different instruments so i ended up getting in that class and and uh I was in that class for about six, eight months or whatever. Then I ended up getting in a riot or whatever in a day room and shit. And uh, they sent me to Sea Yard after the melee was over with and shit. They sent me to Sea Yard, so I was over there. And I ended up being able to bring that class that was on B Yard to Sea Yard because they didn't have it on Sea Yard. It was called Arts and Corrections. Mm -hmm. And they didn't have no rap class over there. So I started a hip hop class over there on Tuesdays and Saturdays. And uh, I had people coming in, you know, on Tuesdays and Saturdays. I, I would recruit all the tight artists. If you could sing or if you, you, you know, you could rap or whatever, I would get you in that class. Right. And we would put in work, you know. But, like, the yard was going on lockdown, on and off, on and off lockdown so much. And I had been in that class for a while after that that they gave me a machine. It was called a Boss Jam Station. And I took that Boss Jam Station, and the captain gave me a... a, a he gave me a memorandum to take that boss jam station to the cell mm -hmm. through the free staff that was running the class. So I ended up being able to take this little machine back to the cell. And like I said, we was going on lockdown so much that me and my celly or you know, decided that, you know, we're gonna start recording in this motherfucker. So we I gutted a mic out the studio during class and I brought that motherfucker back to the cell. So we started recording in the cell. I hooked up the mic to my speaker, which was a, uh, I had a, a Super 2 at the time. If anybody, if you know about that prison shit, you know about the Super 2s and the Super 3s. I had a Super 2, and I had my, uh, my, my, uh, my CD player and my Walkman hooked up to it. I just doubled up the CD, the, the tape players with the Walkman and the tape player from the, the CD player and started recording tape to tape and recording the mics. Wow. Yeah. Man, so we got that mic right feeding there. the beat going and just start dropping shit. We was recording tapes. I got 12 tapes that y'all ain't heard. 12 tapes. But yeah, we drop, we re-dropping all that shit. We got, you know, that's what uh, Tales from a Cell is. Uh, so y'all know Tales from a Cell is some stuff that I wrote in prison. You know, I probably got like one track or two tracks on there, I believe, that I did out here on the street. But the rest of that shit was wrote in prison. You know, and it's still relevant today because it's, it's, it might be old to me, but it's new to you, you know, so. That's right, and being in prison and, you know, just going through the through the motions and, and dealing with all the CEOs all the way down to the, you know, the politics in prisons are just so different than, you know, your outer living. How was it, you know, getting out, you know, being in there 12 years, I know a lot of people are actually, like, scared to come out. They become what you call institutionalized. You're a very strong-hearted person. I know that didn't kind of relate to you, but did you? Did it even cross your mind uh, the day you got free? Because I, I, and that's another special thing that me and you share in common is the day that you actually got free is is my birthday. You know yeah. what I mean? Which is January fifteenth, yeah. and and you were freed uh, the same day as my birthday. Now, how was that? How 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 you as an inmate being in prison so long? How did you feel coming out? Well. I know you had that happy side, like, hell yeah, I'm getting out. But then after, there's probably another side, too, like, damn, what if I fuck up? What if, you know, any little thing, because all eyes are on you. You know, like the song Tupac, all eyes on me, really all eyes are on you from, you know, the government side, the county side, you know, because you went in there for for a, a high high price in, in society that, that people and the government don't like. You know, when you shoot at the police or you do anything against law enforcement, that's something considered, you know, where, where they really want to kill you and they always have this stamp on you where, 
oh, now he's out and he served his time. Well, yeah, you know, it's like on your record. So when they actually put your name in, you know, and run you up or, you know, you, you drive and, and you're trying to, you know, live a whole different, completely different life, that's always stuck with you. So you kind of like, you can't run around with your hand on the gun anymore because you'll, you'll automatically be put back in the cell. But at the same time, it's like, how can you protect yourself from somebody trying to kill you? Because it's always in the back of your mind, you know, uh, that they don't like you, you know what I mean? So how how was that? I'll tell you, uh, first and foremost, like being, you know, I'm not worried about nah, motherfucker, because first and foremost, everybody can die, everybody gonna die, everybody bleed, you know? So the day you came out, but how'd you feel? Like, the day I came out? Yeah. The day I came Cause out. Cause I know today you feel good. You don't, you don't worry today about I nothing. Feel, and, yeah. And you know, cause nah. you've been out free for a minute. Right. But, but let's let's reflect back to that actual day. How did you Man, how did you I, really feel when, when you came I, out? When I first got out, before they let me out them gates, I didn't think they was gonna let me out the gates. I was up I was up in the cell at about probably like three, four in the morning. And I was just laying there looking at the ceiling and I just I I, I knew. I knew yeah. I'm like they ain't gonna let me out. You know, I've been gone too long, like shit didn't even make no sense. Right. You know, but they opened the door, they told me, you know, get, you know, roll your shit up, you out of here. Right. And uh when I got out of there, just basically man, like it was all like a dream and shit. It's all like a movie. When I first got out, mm -hmm. when I first got out, I'm telling you, like I had like they put me in the white van and shit and, and after I put my dress out on, they put me in the white van and we drove out to the front of the prison and shit. Mm -hmm. And when we got to the front of the prison, I had probably like 30 or 40 family members and shit, all with cell phones and I never seen a cell phone before. So everybody had these cell phones and shit popped up like this. Wow. And it, it reminded me of like, you know, the motherfuckers when, when somebody famous get off the plane in China and shit, and how everybody be having their cameras up and shit. Mm -hmm. You know, and, and it was just everybody had their phones and shit up, and they was taking pictures and talking and shit, and it just it just blew my mind. Like, what the fuck are they doing? So you, you never know? you never seen that before? Nah, nah, I had never seen a cell phone. Man, that's crazy. And it was only beepers when we left. That's crazy. And I got a I got another question for you. I'm gonna do these shout outs first before we get into that next question. It's DJ King Assassin. With the incredible TSP Tales from a Cell, you know, uh, I hosted that mixtape for him, and he has a story to tell, you know, about that. It's not just an album, it's an actual story that goes with it, and we're covering that story right now exclusively, and that's why we're coming through TSP's channel right now, because most of his fans are, are hearing this and they want to know, you know, more history about TSP and, and, you know, his lifestyle, how it was back then, and where it is now, because he's a totally changed person from back then uh, of what took him to prison to serve 12 years you know what i mean so let this be a lesson to all of you kids out there too at the same time um it, it's it's he could have lost his life in there you know what i mean yeah. there's so many different type of politics that we're going to get into that he's going to explain why you don't want to be in prison too at the same time and i'm pretty sure tsp is going to tell some stories about that as well uh, as far as being locked up in prison and and you know uh living getting out and living a righteous life now but at the same time how it is the lifestyle in prison so that these kids it's kind of like the scared straight situation these kids you know they they want to act so tough and bad and all that but when it comes down to jail time they don't want to serve their time you know what i mean some people want to commit suicide because they can't stand the the pain of being locked up, you know what I mean? If you do the crime, you're gonna do the time. That's how it is. Um, we're gonna give shout outs right now to everybody in the place to be, and let's go for them shout outs. Jeanette Brooks, what's up? Jeanette Brooks Abney is in the place to be. Also, we have uh, Don Lopez is on the check in. Uh, Tidy Bone, what's up, Tidy Bone? Tidy Bone is a strong supporter. We love you, Tidy Bone. Rashad X Farrakhan, I see you over there, Rashad X Farrakhan. Tamika Porter, what's up, Tamika? Mm -hmm. Tristan Overgaard is in the building, and that's my dog right there, Mr. Loco. You know what I mean? Uh, Bossy's in the building. What's up, Bossy? That's my homegirl right there. Salute to you, Bossy. Salute to ya. Salute. Uh, Tidy Bone, he says, man, keep the skills cracking, TSP, you know, with that West Coast shit, Pop Lope. Uh, man. And, uh, of course, uh, Rashad. My boy says uh, his favorite song from Tupac is I Ain't Mad At You. That's something that, that he gets into. Uh, Dana Dane with fame. Hey, Dana Dane from Top Notch Magazine. Dana Dane is in the place to be. Dana Dane, Dana Dane with fame. We love Dana Dane. Christine Parkus. 
which is one of my favorites out there. Kristen Parkis, what's up, Kristen Parkis? Mary White, hey, Mary White, I see you. Eric Shields, my dog, you know, and, you know, it's a trip because uh, talking about prison, I was talking to Eric, Eric Shields, TSP, and guess what, I told, uh, I told Eric Shields, uh, I said, hey, how you doing? You know, just wishing, uh, you know, uh, happy holidays and hope, hope, you know, I sent him his first Christmas tree. To a lot of people, I sent him their, their first Christmas tree, you know what I mean? You know, I said, Eric, uh, you know, happy, you know, here's your first Christmas tree. I'm sending it to you, you know, as a message through Facebook, which, you know, a lot of you probably got from me, a Christmas tree. And um, I said, hey, uh, here's, a, here's your first Christmas tree. Uh, he responded, hey, I appreciate the Christmas tree. I appreciate the love. But check this out, man. Uh, here's the bad news, assassin, is I'm not going to be, you know, home for Christmas. I'm going to actually, I, I have to turn myself in to go to prison for Christmas. That's what he responded to me with. And I was like, you know what, bro? Uh, man, that's, that's you know, I feel your pain on everything. And I told him this, and, and he'll be here to, to back that up because he's on this chat. I told him, you know what? Miracles do happen, bro. Keep on praying. Just keep on praying. Stay stay positive in situations you never know uh, miracles do happen that's what I told him. miracles do happen and do you know uh, within a week's time he hits me back and and he said uh, well a after that he actually said you know right on response he said you know what uh, I, I truly uh, you know acknowledge you know you telling me that miracles do happen but it, it would be a big miracle to happen for me not to to go to prison but he said thanks anyways about it, man. He, he sure appreciates me. And do you know a week later he hits me up and he says uh, he's not going to prison. A miracle happened. What do you think about PSP? Man, that's a blessing, man, uh, that uh, God creates such miracles. But uh, I had to go through it mm -hmm. to get to it. Exactly. And, you know. and we're going to talk about with TSP and he's going to definitely uh, talk about more things. But... You're po posted right now with us, and we're going to uh, give more shout-outs. Man, boy, everybody's on a check-in tonight. We got, uh, man, Dana Dane, Eric Shields. Uh, we love you, Eric Shields, and, and we, we thank you that uh, you're, you're, you're not in prison, and we think that, uh, you know, you're free still, so that's the main thing. And, you know, even if you did have to go to prison, man, you still got to, you know, keep that positiveness in you. We know it's a hard situation to... To turn yourself in and to make things happen and it all comes down to you know uh lawyers and money and you know we always fight cases where you know it makes us broke and whatnot you know what i mean so uh, i'm glad that the miracle happened i'm you know you didn't explain exactly how the miracle happened the main thing is that it that it happened and that's all that i'm worried about that you know you're free and and you beat that case or whatever it was you know maybe it's still pending i'm not too sure what's going on with you but the main thing you told me that you know what, assassin, uh, miracles do happen, and it did happen in this case, and I know it was a long shot in happening, and the miracle did happen, you know what I mean, so uh, I definitely, you know, take my hats off for whatever you did to, to make that happen, but it was God at the end of the day, he, he made the miracle that happened for you, you know what I mean, so uh, yeah, big shout outs to Eric Shields on that, I thought I'd share that story because it's a, it's an incredible story, you know, and uh, who else do we have in the building, we have Dano, Dano J. Kanahi. I don't know. Uh, it's Real Mob 662 in the building. Shout out to the 662. I don't know if I'm saying your name right. Danny O. J. Canal. Uh, YD, the vet, is in the building. YD, the vet. Also, Christian Parkis. Uh, she loves my block from Tupac. She has several favorites. Uh, Sean Ego. I G O E is in the building. And uh, Eric Shields. Yeah, truly a best one. Uh, Truly, a, definitely a, a blessing. Athenia Smith. Hey, Athenia Smith, we love you, and God bless you, too. You know what I mean? Demetrius Truesdale is in the building. Uh, Patchy is not around. Patchy is actually handling business. Uh, Patchy, where is Patchy? He's ready to, he's ready to go smoke. He's ready to go smoke blunt right now. So uh, we're going to go take a a blunt a blunt smoke right now. We're going we're gonna to take a blunt intermission, and uh, as you can see, every building in you know, we have all, all the uh, cats watching us right now with the live interviews at one of the most... And we got some incredible things happening for y'all on the West Coast <laughs> right now. Why don't y'all just tune into the King Assassin <laughs> Show because it's going down. We're going to be majorly smoke, smoke, smoking smoke. majorly. Indeed, indeed. And uh, check it out. The most prestigious buildings in the place to be is right here where we're at right now at the uh, Biltmore Hotel. 
And uh, the Biltmore Hotel is one of the oldest buildings in Los Angeles, California. This is one of the oldest, we're talking about Hotel California. This is one of the oldest buildings in California right here. You know what I mean? So keep it on lock. It's your boy DJ King Assassin live and direct. You know how we do it. And we are out. Keep it on tune. Don't forget to follow TSP at TSPOW1. Follow me at DJ King Assassin. And uh, we're going to keep it popping for you we're gonna uh definitely keep the w rolling and uh god bless keep god first until then we will see you i am out we love you unity is power u-i-p-m remember unity that is movement power is movement real. yeah that's right the christmas tree y'all want to see a big christmas tree let's take them to the big christmas tree watch that over there yeah so uh there's the big christmas tree and that christmas tree there's a lot of gifts under that christmas tree you see that pretty cool and it goes way high that's a high christmas tree you know what i mean so i could turn around where you can see just how big it is yeah see that's the top and that's the bottom that, that's what it is so you know good things happening good christmas trees the, the mood is right here with the toy soldier toy soldiers in the building yep Yep, more toy soldiers. That's right. And there's good old TSP coming out of the the VIP room. There go Denzel right there. And there's Denzel Washington leaving. We just got through filming, filming a big thing. I'm gonna go talk to my boys over here. Was uh, let's go out this way so I can go talk to the boys over here. And then after we'll come back around the other way. But uh, as you can see, we're in big film mode today. And uh, once again, uh, the Chargers are in the building. And they, hey, 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 tell, tell them about uh, where are you from, first tell of all. Tell them about, I'm from Oceanside, from? California, the beautiful city of Oceanside in the house. I want to take a second to tell you about who should be this year's MVP. Breakout star of the season, Melvin Gordon. No one saw it coming. Dude's killing it. Should have been crushing it from the get-go, but we'll take it now when we need it. Hey, you were here filming a movie. I don't know if you can talk about it, but uh, what were you doing? What, what, it's, a, it's a show about MMA called Kingdom. It's uh -huh. sponsored by AT&T, so they have a shitload of money, because I'm at like $90 an hour right now. I've been here wow. since 4 a.m. That's big right there. <laughs> and they're tell, paying me. Yeah, and tell them what you do. What um, do, you do. I do everything. I protect the location, and I serve food to the masses. It's called craft service. Craft service. Wow, that's mega, and that's big. Cool. And, and he's at one of the best hotels here in Los Angeles, California. This I mean, is actually, this is the standard, bro, but I kick it at the standard a lot. Yeah, so he's always top-notch. He is the elite here in the that's building. That's all we do, baby. And if you're how, from San Diego, nothing second best just doesn't count, bro. Exactly, that's right. One of the best places to live in the world, San Diego. And Not Oceanside. one of the best, the best. The best, oh, exactly. Well, I was just down there a couple weeks ago with the Chargers. I was just down there a couple weeks ago. Are you at Mission Beach? Do you hang on Mission Beach? No, I had field seats for the Chargers and, the, uh, Chargers and Titans game. Oh, wow. I, I got to meet LT, the great LT. Great LT? And who's your favorite football player of all time? Number 55, Junior Seau. Rest in peace. Rest in peace, Junior Seau, man. Big shout out to Oceanside, man. Oceanside High. You know. El Camino High. El Camino, the Pirates and the Bucks, huh? <laughs> That's, we're in the house. Man. We're the Panthers. The Panthers? You are the Panthers, folks. Man, I love San Diego County. I love Oceanside. Everything in between Vista. Uh, what you Carl's bad Carl's bad man I love Carl's man Carl's Carl's bad is good Escondido Poway El Cajon right. wow they're bringing back memories right there <laughs> you gotta go home bro oh, no, you gotta go home <laughs> <laughs> all right G one love man all right yeah yeah so as you can see we are uh gonna go have a blunt session let's go have a blunt session on the other side over go there talk to, go talk to my nigga yeah go talk to Denzel my nigga Denzel Washington you just walked right now. Yeah. Yeah. He I said, did. <laughs> Is that what he said? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he said me about the road of blood. He said, <laughs> my neck. Yeah, yeah. And that's how we do it. And we have our, our favorite we have our favorite guy right here. This is he's been working yeah. hard. And I've been right. seeing you work hard for the past week. And I'm glad that's that me. you have been working hard. I got a hard heart. Hey, that's how you do it. All right, G. Yep. TSP's in the building. And, uh, was oh, that my card? Yeah, I gotta get my card right here. 
And um, boy, oh boy, yeah, good things happening. Um, I'm glad you stayed tuned in. in yeah, see, the film is in progress. You can see. Thanks for your co cooperation. Cooperation. Thanks for your cooperation. Co cooperation, because the filming is in progress, right? So. Look at this. Look. That's a ugly ass bitch. She's stupid. <laughs> She's stupid. TSP, what are you doing, TSP? Are you grabbing people where they're not supposed to be grabbed on? Mm -hmm. Yeah, should have brought your jacket because it's kind of chilly outside, you know. It's in the car? Is that black? No, he has a dress to see. Now, this is the actual dress, and those are the shoes right there, folks. Is that the Black Dahlia's dress? I don't think it's the Black Dahlia's dress. This is the dress that they actually wore. It's called a Biltmore dress. And this, this dress was Peggy actually... Peggy Hamilton. Yeah, Peggy Hamilton wore this the, when they on the grand opening right. of this uh, hotel. Dinner and, dance. Uh, she wore that for her dinner dance. Yeah, That's for her dinner dance. Crazy. And if you can see the picture right there, that was actually her wearing the dress. And this is the actual dress right now. Wow. Uh, it looks like it's kind of like moving. Or is that just me right now? I think she wants to pop out of that dress alive right now. She's uh, in full effect. What if you've seen them, them shoes move right now? <laughs> what if they start sea walking on you? <laughs> Go for a gown. <laughs> Walking. Oceanside is in the building. With the sick ass kicks, bro. Appreciate word it. up, word up. Yeah, so uh, we're posted, posted here and, and doing it live. Tiffany room. There's a Tiffany room. You know? He said that to you? Denzel said that to you? Yeah, Denzel, he said, my nigga. What you doing out here, my nigga? Yeah, because he was just filming. Denzel was just filming up inside here, and he just shouted TSP out. I think I got him on camera. If I rewind it, you'll see him. He had a beanie on. He was just uh, all on the under. Yeah. Yeah, we need to get you movie Yeah, so, uh, you know, nothing but love. I got nothing but love for you, baby. I got nothing but love for you. Got to give a shout out to... Uh, my homegirl Rachel out there. I gotta give a shout out to Christian Parkus. Uh, YG, the vet man, Pomona City Movement. You know what I mean? Get your Puff Puff Pass tickets, he's saying. And uh, the pimp chair is definitely in the building. Yes, yes, Christian Parkus, uh, the pimp. Uh, Inez Franklin. What's up, Inez Franklin? Eric Shields. I see you. Blessings is blessing. What's up? Yeah, yeah. Michael Hyman is in the building. Mary White. We love you, Mary White. Oh, man. Danichi, I hope I'm saying your name right. You know what I mean? If I'm, oh, Daniel. Okay, you're saying Daniel's his name. Okay, Daniel. Yeah, you spell it a different way. That's pretty cool, man, to have the spelling like that. You know what I mean? Um, uh, Danielle, he's uh, giving a shout out right there. You see that? So, uh, mm -hmm. yeah, good things happening. And good things happening right there. You can see. We can do this in Cali, like just right in the front street. Nobody bothers, not even the police, nobody, because it's legal in California. So, this is what you can do in Cali and not even trip. It's like Amsterdam, Amsterdam, Amster, uh, what did Kilo call it? Amsterdam. Grams. Grams Uncut. Grams Uncut. Fish out to Kilo out there in New York. New York, we will see you soon. I'm heading out to the Bronx, man, December 17th. You want to come with me? Hey, you man, December 17th, uh, New York is in the place to be. I will be there in New York. You know what I mean? Uh, they're getting a piece of Cali out there. And we will be there posted, twisted with our main dude, DJ K Slay is in the building. We will be with K Slay in the Bronx with kilograms uncut. Doing it way B-I-G. Rest in peace. 
Tupac B.I.G. Um, you know, we're just sitting here just uh, having fun, man. I want to show everybody these palm trees right here because these palm trees are actually, I don't know if you guys can see them, but they have lights on them where they turn colors. The palm trees are actually turning colors, folks. So uh, let me see if I can get a, a better picture for y'all in downtown Los Angeles right now where you can actually see the palm trees turn colors, okay? Um, let me take you to them. You see them palm trees up there? They're turning colors, okay? How dope is that? Yep, there it is, and that's Christmas time in downtown LA, folks. Yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. So, uh, take a walk with me. As I take you on a journey, posted with the man himself, the man of the hour, Mr. T-S-P-P-P-P-P-P. -P 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 -P. Hey, y'all can follow at T-S-P-O-W-1, man. I be fucking with Instagram. So y'all follow at T-S-P-O-W-1 or T-S-P on Instagram. Yeah, because T-S-P is more of an Instagram dude. You know what I mean? A lot of people are turning into just straight Instagram cats, right? Right. And uh, <laughs> Instagram I ain't cats. straight Instagram. <laughs> okay, then. What are you, then? Straight gangster, straight gangster, straight gangster. Now, what's Matt. the name of the new album? What the new album is called Unity is Power. It's the Unity is Power movement. All That's right. the new album. That's the new album. Unity is Power movement. Y'all can go get that Tales from a Cell right now because it's available. You can go get the Tales from a Cell from any online retailer. You can go get the Caution album. That shit is banging. You can go get the uh, uh, the End of Days album. It's all out there, available to you. Y'all go support the album and support the movement. There's some real West Coast unity mu music and shit that y'all need to check out. That's right. That's right. And everybody keep it on lock. Keep um, it on lock. We're going to go ahead and uh, get to our session right now. We're going to get to our session and we are going to uh, possibly go on live again. Right, TSP? Yeah. Yeah, so uh, stay in the zone. Stay in the main zone. Stay in the smoke zone. God bless. We out. Peace.